Night Tips. Hello and welcome to another Tech by Tips video. First of all, I want to thank four donors to the channel, and these people are Zane Stuart Boyd, Angel Corbo, Patrick Loaders, and Matthew Good. I'm sorry if I butchered your names. Some of those names are kind of interesting, and I'm not sure how to pronounce them, but thank you very, very much. Every single donation that I get is highly appreciated. You are rock stars, so thank you for keeping the channel alive and motivating me to continue making videos for you. Now, on today's video, we have, this is a pretty old request, honestly, but I want to make sure that I cover this. This was a few months ago that Scott Sparman asked, I have two Synology NAS, a 36 bay DS series for storage and a 9 series I use for containers. Can you do a tutorial on how to set up the Rs when the container is on one Synology server with the data on another Synology server? Been a great series, thanks. And this is an excellent use case. Like he has a 36 bay NAS, so that's definitely like a mass storage device that he has. And he wants to have the other NAS only running containers, so not having to deal with the disk and stuff. So that's actually a very nice use case. And this is very easy to do, it's very possible. So we're gonna be covering that now in this video. All right, so let's first go into the prerequisites here. If you see my screen, I have my NAS here. This is gonna be my virtual NAS, where I only have one disk that is 250 gigabytes of space. And this is the one that uh, I'm going to pretend to have the same situation as uh, the person that requested the video. So this is going to be my NAS that runs the containers, right? And I'm going to have another NAS here, which is the NAS that has a bunch of drives, right? In this case, this NAS is my actual production NAS, and it has about 10 disks, and it's pretty um, a pretty good amount of uh, storage that I have, right? So the first prerequisite is you need to have the same user with the same user ID and group ID in both places, just to make sure that everything goes smoothly without problems, right? So I'm gonna be using the same administrator account that I created in both NAS devices. It has the same name, the same user ID, and the same group ID. And then we have this NAS that has all the storage here, and this other NAS that only has one little disk and uh, uh, I'm gonna be using the storage from the other NAS. So that's the first thing I wanted to cover. So now about the, how, how do we get one NAS to use the storage, all the disk space that is in another NAS? All right, so the first thing that you need to make sure is that on the NAS that has all of that information, that has the huge amount of disks, you have a folder created, a shared folder, and that shared folder, uh, shared and that shared folder is shared either through Samba or NFS. So whenever you create a shared folder, then you have to make sure that when you go into edit, you have an option for NFS or Samba. And once you have that, then you should be able to mount that folder in the other NAS. So that's the first thing. Make sure that you have it created and that it's shared and that the user that you created for the administrator in both places has access to that. So once we have that in there, then we can go into the container NAS. We're gonna go into file station and in file station, I have a folder here that is where um, I have like stuff data in here. So in here, I'm gonna create another folder. In my case, I'm gonna name it storage NAS. Let's say that, storage NAS. So now this currently doesn't have anything. It's just a folder, an empty folder that is here. But we have the tools option here that allows us to do some magic within the NAS. So let me keep that here. Now, if we select tools and we say mount a remote folder, you notice that we have two options. We can mount a uh, CIFS, which is a Samba share folder or an NFS shared folder. So we can get that folder from the other NAS and mount it into this NAS. So in my case, I'm gonna use CIFS, which is Samba. So I'm gonna select this. And then it, it's gonna prompt us for information, right? So it says, where is that folder? 
And if we hover here, it says an example is slash slash IP slash share. So in my case, I'm going to say the IP of my NAS that has all of that information in the disks. And then we need to specify the user account that we said that we were going to be using to mount this. So this would be the username of that account. And then here would be the password. And then you have to browse here to a directory where you want to mount that. So we're going to go into HTPC and I'm going to select that folder that I said storage NAS. And I'm going to say OK. So that's going to say, that's going to do the following. This share that's come, coming from the NAS that has all the storage is going to be mounted into the container NAS in this location, which is this folder that I just created. And I want to make sure that I mount automatically on startup. So then once we have this, we can click on mount. And now we know that it says, you know, there's a remote folder mounted into my NAS. So remember, we didn't have this part that says remote folder. So now we do have them mounted and we can see the content. Let me delete this because that was me testing something before. We see the content of my other NAS here, all the contents of my other NAS. And if we go into the folder that we created, we see the same stuff. So now we know for sure that this folder here is connected to our other NAS. And as you can see, I have a lot of storage space there. I have 14 terabytes. So now we know that I have access to that folder in here in my NAS. So that's perfect. And if you see here, you see the icon here that says that this folder is actually from the network. So that's another thing to notice. Now, I have that mounted. So how can I validate that I can use this in containers? Because that was the main ask here on the video. So we can see in file station that we can use it because we see the contents here, right? But in order to use it with containers, then I'm going to start up a container just to give you an example of how you can do it, right? Manually. And it will work the same with the Docker Compose because now that you have it here in your NAS, it's like if you had that folder in your NAS all the time. So we go into Container Manager and in here, I'm going to go into the registry and I'm going to look for bash because I want a simple container to have a command line to test it. So I'm going to download this the latest version that's fine this is a very small container so it downloads pretty fast so here we go we have the image of bash and now i can run it so now i'm going to say on my bash container i'm going to go next and i'm going to mount a local folder like if i have this folder and all that space in this nas but you can see that i don't have all of that space right so then i'm going to say add folder i'm going to go into this storage nas folder that i mounted and I'm going to put it in the test directory inside my container and I'm not going to change anything else I just need to make sure that I mount this so next and then I'm going to say okay run that container so now it's going to run that container we can see it here and if you see in the container it should map a folder locally so when we go here we see that it's mounting that storage NAS folder to the test in the container so now how we can check this okay the container is running, so we can go here into action, open terminal. All right, for some reason it is acting up with bash, so let me just open it with shell, so bin shell. And bash, you go away, and here we go, we we're in the shell. And now if we do an uh, ls, we should see that we have a test folder here, and it's mounted as the default administrator. So you can basically confirm that it has been mounted, but let's go into that folder and then do an ls and in here we see that we see the content of that folder that is on our other nas so now here what i'm going to do is i'm going to do an echo and i'm going to put the word test in a test.txt file so basically i'm writing the word text into a new text file in the root of that directory so i'm going to run that and then we have the text folder there i mean the text file so i can just cat it to make sure that it is there and as you can see it says text so now i have written to a file in that folder and you can see it here now let's go into the original nas that is actually the one with the disks and see if we can see the same file if we go here and we go into the htpc folder voila we have the text file here that was created at 12.52 so there we go. It was actually created and you can see that the folder was mounted properly 
into the NASA has all the disks. Now, if I go here and delete this file, and then I go back into the other NAS and refresh, ha, it disappears. So you can see everything is connected. And as you can see, my container was able to mount that storage that actually exists in the other NAS. So that's the way that you would go about using storage that is in another Synology NAS in a NAS that you just want to use to run containers. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. Uh, that really helps us to grow and to you know get known and opens opportunities for us. So that's really appreciated. And as always, all of these videos that I'm creating uh, lately, a lot of them are just things that you have requested. So feel free to write in the comment section below. Let me know about things that you would like to see featured in the channel. I also reply to your questions to my videos. So if you're having a hard time, I try to help you out as best as I can. And I try to reply as soon as possible. So I will always pay attention to your comments. Feel free to comment in the comment section below. Additionally, you should have noticed that you didn't get an ad on my video. And that is on purpose because I am not monetizing the channel. So that means that whenever I go through the effort of creating these types of videos for you, I'm actually making zero dollars from YouTube out of this. So if you like my content and you want to support me, I'm going to put a link in the description below for PayPal where you can donate there like the people in the beginning of the video. And I also put a Bitcoin wallet if you prefer to donate that way. So anyway, any donation is highly appreciated. So it is there for you. So that's going to be it for this one. I hope you liked it. I hope it, it, you find it useful. Share the video with other people that you think might benefit from this. And I'll see you in the next one.